What's up, everybody? Daniel Jeremiah here with the top eight rookies as we head into the 2020 season, the grade eight. And let's start right down here in the corner with Brian Edwards, the wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders. Now, I know they took Henry Ruggs in the first round, but they're able to circle back for Brian Edwards. And this is somebody out of South Carolina. If he had stayed healthy through the spring, uh, he was not able to work out at the combine. If he had been healthy and been able to work out there, I think you're talking about him as a second round pick maybe even sneaks into the bottom of the first round because his tape was outstanding. Uh, but the Raiders' good fortune, he's able to uh, fall in the draft a little bit. They're able to secure his services, and he immediately emerges as their starting X wide receiver. Tyrell Williams is out for the year. That is his job. And in that offense with John Gruden, when you get down in the red zone, he's going to be the clear target on the 50-50 balls, his ability to play above the rim and make plays. He's going to be a big target for him there. And he's outstanding after the catch as well. Very physical. So you'll see some, some yards piled up there as well. I think he's going to have a very productive season. Uh, so Brian Edwards, he comes in at number eight on the list. Uh, now let's get down right below me. Number seven, uh, let's go to the big man, Mekhi Becton, out of uh, Louisville. There with the Jets, he's already been emerging and has is, is been the day one starter there at left tackle to protect Sam Darnold. Now, in pass protection, there's still some work to be done, uh, some improvement to be made, but just look at his size, uh, the sheer size and length that he has, 370 pounds uh, with long arms. You can't get through him. You're not going to be able to bowl him, um, and you're not going to be able to beat him to the edge. He can cut you off. So he's going to have some work just having to redirect versus some counter moves, maybe some bumps in the road early, uh, but he'll get there. Now, in the run game, different story. He is ready to dominate day one. Uh, Le'Veon Bell is going to love running behind him, his ability to just reset the line of scrimmage, to just maul people in that zone blocking scheme. And also, he has the athleticism to be able to climb up to the second level and cut off linebackers. So immediate impact in the run game, he's only going to get better there in the passing game. Mekhi Becton comes in at number seven. Number six down here in the corner, Patrick Queen, a linebacker for the Ravens out of LSU. Really kind of a late bloomer for the LSU Tigers. Somebody did start at the beginning of the year, finally was given that position, and he took off as well as this defense. And it's his athletic ability, his speed, his range in the run game. He's also got tremendous man cover skills to be able to match up with backs and tight ends, and he's very instinctive as a zone dropper. So somebody that's going to have an impact on all three downs and somebody playing in a defense that's going to be playing with a lead for a large amount of time. You're going to see his ability as a blitzer and as a coverage player to make it a big impact there for the Ravens. So Patrick Queen comes in at number six on the list. Number five right here, Antoine Winfield Jr., the safety for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Obviously a familiar name. You remember his dad was a fantastic player in the secondary for a long time. And Antoine Winfield Jr. has the versatility to play as the high safety, as that free safety but can also drop down and cover in the nickel and be an impactful blitzer and playmaker down low. So that type of versatility in Todd Bowles' defense is going to be very welcome. Looks like he's going to be an immediate starter and somebody with his instincts and ball skills playing behind a pass rush when you have Barrett and JPP and their ability to get after the quarterback. I think he has opportunities to make plays on the ball, and I think he has a very big year for Todd Bowles and that Tampa defense. So Antoine Winfield right there. At number five, we get over here to number four. That is CeeDee Lamb uh, for the Cowboys. Coming out of Oklahoma, I thought he was the best wide receiver in the draft class. It sounds like he's been outstanding in camp as just one over his quarterback in Dak Prescott, who already has tremendous faith and trust in his receiver. And CeeDee Lamb can create that separation right off the line of scrimmage. He can get separation at the top of his route. He catches everything, phenomenal hands. And then after the catch, I thought he was the best run-after-catch receiver in the draft. He can make you miss. He can break tackles. He makes things happen. So in that offense with the Cowboys, I think they find ways to get him the football. He's not going to face any double coverage with all the other weapons they have uh, at their disposal. So a lot of one-on-one -on -one wins there for CeeDee Lamb. He comes in at number four. We get up here at the top corner, number three, Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I feel like uh, LSU, we could talk about this LSU rookie class all day long. There's so many of them. But he comes in at number three for me, not only the, the talent that he possesses, but the fit. He's a perfect fit for Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs. He's a space player. 
in the passing game with their speed with Tyreek Hill and company. They're going to be able to run off coverage. It's going to create easy completions for Patrick Mahomes, and you're going to get a lot of yards after the catch for Clyde Edwards-Alaire. He's also going to, they're going to find ways to get him matched up on linebackers. You're going to see him win with those little angle routes, which he's outstanding at. He's going to be phenomenal in the passing game. And in the run game, he's going to see light boxes. And when you have light boxes and you have a tackle breaker, which is what he is, it's going to lead to a lot of doubles. You know, I don't know how many 70, 80-yard runs you're going to see, but you're going to see Clyde Edwards-Alaire pile up 15, 20, 22, 25-yard runs in this scheme. He's going to have a huge year uh, there for the Chiefs. Number two on the list, it's his quarterback at LSU and Joe Burrow. Uh, Joe Burrow there with a team in the Cincinnati Bengals that I think has a really good nucleus of players on the offensive side of the ball, especially look at the weapons on the outside. You look at what he has in the backfield with Joe Mixon. I think he's got an opportunity to have some success there. Now, the challenge is the offensive line. Uh, it's not quite there yet, and there's some holes. So I want to see what Zach Taylor does. Can they empty out the formation like they did at LSU, let Joe Burrow be able to beat beat the pressure uh, with his mind as opposed to putting that all on the offensive line in front of him. But uh, elite accuracy, elite processing ability, and the ability to extend plays and make plays with his legs. I think Joe Burrow, you know, being a rookie and starting in this environment is not easy, but I think he's equipped to, to handle it. He's going to have adversity early. I think you'll see him get better as the year goes along. That gets us to number two right up here in the top corner, and that's the big dog. That's Chase Young, who was the best player in the draft. And from all accounts, has had a phenomenal training camp there with the Washington football team. He's going to get a chance to play on a very talented defensive front. I still think he'll command double teams early on in the season. Teams are just not going to be able to single up against him. He's just too big, strong, powerful, and athletic. You, you look at the impact that Nick Bosa had last year. I think you see the same thing here from Chase Young. I think he goes double digits in sacks. I think he's going to be a Pro Bowl player year one and, uh, and very quickly will establish himself as one of the premier defensive players in the National Football League. Uh, so there you have it. That's the grade eight. As we head into week one, I'll be updating this list on a weekly basis right here on YouTube. Uh, let me know down below in the comments who should have been on this list and, uh, and where I was wrong. I'm sure you guys have a few thoughts on that. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.